10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good scene, good scene, good voice, and if you didn't take care of the batteries, we'll figure something out on the back end. If you didn't take care of the batteries, we'll figure something out on the back end. And I did not take care of them, but I changed them last night um, during a, a video that I recorded. Thanks. Appreciate that. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I am ready for the event. ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. How me? I've got you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, everyone. This is Principal Quintana here to kick off the PS28 blast off with the New York Hall of Science. And to ask the first question, here's Damien. Hello, my name is Damien. How and what do you eat and drink in space. Hi, Damien. We eat very similar foods to what you eat on Earth. It's just that when we come up here, our food is mostly pre-made or dehydrated. So we either have to add hot water or we put it in a little oven that we use to heat food up. So like on some days I have beef stew, I can have chicken fajitas, um, and I just heat it up in our little oven or I can have uh, chicken cashew curry or something like that that I rehydrate. And then for things that I like to drink, I like tea. Um, I like to have lots of tea, but I also like coffee. So we have these drink bags that we use to contain the fluid with a straw that we use to drink our hot coffee, hot tea. We also have um, other drinks that we can have, apple cider, hot cocoa too. So just like you on Earth, some of the, our favorite foods we can have up here as well. Hi, my name is Angela, and my question is, how was the International Space Station built? Well, that's a great question um, because we had a lot of different countries participating to help build the International Space Station. It was built in components. It's about the size of a football field, so we have many different components that were either shipped up on the uh, space shuttle and we used the robotic arm to help assemble those pieces. It took over 115, um, well, over a thousand hours of spacewalks with about 115 spacewalks to actually build it while it was in space. So with our partnerships with different countries, we were able to assemble this beautiful space station that I get to live on right now. Hi, my name is Lucia. My question is, can you visit the moon and other planets? Can we visit other planets? Not yet. We are um, developing, uh, pro we have a program now uh, called the Artemis program where we're going to go back to the moon. And we're going to practice things on the moon and we're going to build things on the moon 
so that um, we can use those when we go further and further out in space. So hopefully in your lifetime, we've established a presence on the moon and maybe even have visited another planet like Mars. Hi, my name is Haley. My question is, what science experiments do you conduct in space? Well, Haley, um, just today, we were experimenting on the human body. And in fact, more specifically, we were looking at our blood. So we um, collected blood and then we processed that blood. And we right now that blood is in an incubation right now for tomorrow, we're gonna put it into a centrifuge. So we're looking at the human body. And so we're doing different experiments on the human body to see how the body adapts to living in space, um, basically microgravity right now. So we're looking at many different things. There's other experiments called the Code Atom Lab, where we're looking at particles at temperatures that are some of the lowest temperatures in the universe. So we're looking at how atoms behave when they're super cold. They don't behave the way they do when you freeze thing, things in your freezer at home. So we're looking at things out in the universe as well. Hi, my name is Jonathan. My question is, what was it like going to outer space in a spacecraft? Well, Jonathan, it was like one of the most amazing rides at an amusement park almost. Um, very different, but it was um, the joy that you would feel when you're on these rides and the exhilaration that you feel when you're being lifted up off the earth and the excitement of what's gonna happen next. So it was very, um, very um, smooth to, you know, just being lifted up off of the earth and into the atmosphere. And um, as we went up higher and higher, we, got, we gained more and more um, gravity. So we had about three Gs, four Gs acting on our bodies. And you could feel the forces acting on your body. And then when we had to um, release one of the um, stages, you could feel your body start to lift up and you went into micro G. So it was very um, beautiful feeling. Um, what a great question. Hello, my name is Lucas. My question is, how does it feel when you're floating? That's a great question. I can show you a little bit if you're watching, so I can show you. One of the cool things about floating is that this is, um, without gravity, this is the natural position of your arms. So for me, it always feels like something is holding me up, um, even though I'm just floating and holding the mic and everything floats. So to me, it's an amazing feeling. I feel like, it feels like you can be Superman, you can fly and do different things. So um, it is a very, very interesting feeling. Hello, my name is Jaylene. I have a question. How can you breathe inside the International Space Station without the machine that gives you oxygen? Well, you, we, the International Space Station has oxygen tanks on the outside, and we have different ports on the inside where we can um, uh, get oxygen. But we also have systems on board that produce oxygen. We have an oxygen generating system as well. And it, our Russian colleagues also have a system to produce oxygen. So really, um, we're provided with everything that we need here to live, to sustain life. Um, the same atmosphere that you have on the Earth, we have a very similar atmosphere that is created for us here uh, in space, even down to the humidity levels that we experience here. We have very, um, rel um, very low humidity in the uh, modules, but it is regulated. And then if you really need air, if you say you're doing a spacewalk, we also have canisters that can provide air for spacewalks. Hi, my name is Matthew, and my question is, is it hot or cold in space? That's another good um, question. Well, inside the space station, the temperature is regulated, but on the outside, in space itself, 
It's very cold. It's like 2.7 degrees um, Kelvin, which is about minus 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's very cold in outer space. Hello, my name is Andrew. My question is, how long does it take to travel to the International Space Station? That's another great question, but it depends on many different factors, like the Soyuz. The Soyuz can um, launch from Earth and within three orbits or every, like, um, within three hours, it can dock to station three orbits or um, three and a half orbits it can get to the space station and sometimes we have to hang out in space for a little while longer and then dock to, um, to the international space station we flew in space for about 33 hours before we docked to the international space station so it all depends on where the space station is located when you when and where you launch um, when you launch and from where um, so it depends on many different factors Hello, my name is Jordan, and my question is, how do you get back to Earth from the International Space Station? <laughs> That's a great question. So the, the ship that we flew up on, called the Dragon, Endeavor is the name of our Dragon um, spaceship. And so we flew here uh, to the International Space Station, Space Station on the Dragon, and we're docked to the station. So our ship is still here with us on the station, docked to the station. And so when we go back home, we get into that same ship, and we um, land back home near, um, hopefully near Florida. Hello, my name is Avery. My question is, how do you stay safe in space? Well, we stay safe in space through many different ways. One of the big ways is we train. We train quite a bit to know what is safe and what is not safe and how to operate in space. Uh, and then there are also things are designed to keep us safe as well. So like a lot of the materials that we use are low flammability. So, you know, just in case there's a fire in space, we don't want to keep, let that fire continue going. So we have many different mechanisms um, and materials that we use, but most of the materials have to be non-flammable. That's one way. And then we have different uh, electrical systems on board, and we have different um, ways to connect those in GFCI cables to keep us safe from getting electrocuted or something like that. Um, so there's many ways, but one of the biggest ways is your training. How do you train? Uh, you train to understand the systems and know how to use them properly. Hola, mi nombre es Rosa. Mi pregunta es, ¿cómo y dónde duermes? Hello, my name is Hazel. My question is, how or where do you sleep? So, uh, we have uh, different crew quarters that we sleep in. So, how, do, how and where do we sleep? So, we sleep in a sleeping bag and we float in our sleeping bag and just to keep us in one place. Otherwise, we will float off everywhere. And we have a, a little room called our crew quarters and it's very small, but in space you don't need that much room because every, you know, we could sleep up here on the ceiling. Everything is an option. So we have a small room, keep us contained, and we have a sleeping bag in there that keeps us from floating away. Hello, my name is Ivy. I have a question for you. Do you plant flowers in space? Hello, my name is Stephanie. My question for you is, do you plant flowers in space? Ivy and Stephanie, those are great questions. I don't know if we've planted flowers yet. We have um, planted tomatoes and lettuce and different things like that um, to see how we can grow our own food in space but maybe some beautiful flowers are next. Hi, my name is Sophia. I have a question for you. How do you train to be an astronaut? Well, the training for to become an astronaut or training during your astronaut candidacy, candidacy is very rigorous. 
We learn to fly in the backseat. I'm a civilian, so I have to learn to fly in the backseat of a jet. And so we fly um, around the United States training. We have analog missions that we do as well, where we either, we can go live underwater for a couple of weeks. We can go train in caves you know, so that we can, you know, simulate what we would do in space as a small crew. We also learn robotics. We learn how to do a spacewalk. We learn everything we can about the International Space Station as well. So the training can be very rigorous. Hi, my name is Mattel. My question is, what are rovers? Well, the rovers we use, we don't use them on the International Space Station, of course, but when we go to the moon and we're on the surface of the moon, in order to get from one point to another, we have these little um, rovers that look like probably a mini Jeep. That's probably the closest thing that um, you can see on Earth that looks like a rover, um, maybe um, a, even a small go golf cart. Um, but that helps us get to get from one point to another to go investigate, to do experiments, to explore. Hola, mi nombre es Nanay, y mi pregunta es, ¿qué hacen para divertirse en el espacio exterior? Hi, my name is Ivan. What, my question is, what do you do for fun in outer space? Well, Lene and Ivan, um, you can do a lot of things in space to have fun. One of the things I like to do is <laughs> I like to call my friends and family and show them like silly tricks that we can do in space. I won't do one here for you. Um, but we also, we have a lot of things that you would have on Earth. Um, we can um, watch movies, we can have dinner together, have dinner parties together, which is one of my favorite things to do just so that we can see everyone's face. So, you know, we can do a lot of similar things that you can do on Earth, but we can't, like, go out and just <laughs> go to a McDonald's. So we have fun am amongst ourselves. Hello, my name is Alex, and my question is, can you tell us about space suits and how they work? So there's a couple of types of spacesuits, like the spacesuit that I wore to get to the space station is a pressure suit. Basically, if the uh, module, if our spaceship depressurizes, uh, the suit that I'm wearing will protect me even if the pressure goes to zero in, this, in the space um, craft. The other type of spacesuit is the spacewalk suit, which is really your space vehicle because it provides you air, it gets rid of the carbon dioxide, and it helps cool your body. You also have water in there. So you, it's basically your vehicle when you're outside doing a spacewalk. So of course the spacesuit for spacewalking is a lot bigger than the suit that I wore to get to the space station, but they have totally different purposes. I just want to take a moment to thank all of our friends at the New York Hall of Science. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.